Hey, this is Jim from FromScratchFarmstead.com and before we had a YouTube channel or a website or anything like that, I actually worked in the world of finding farmland. I helped kind of beginning new farmers find farmland opportunities. And then we also navigated our own search for farmland, which is how we found our five acre homestead property that we're on now. And so I'm gonna share my top 10 resources and tips for finding farmland to give you the best odds of success. So you've dialed in your search criteria, you know kind of the general area or location that you are searching within, and you are ready to get going on your search for farmland. And so let's jump right into those top 10 farmland finding tips. All right, so number one is to use real estate search websites strategically. So I'm talking realtor.com, Zillow, Redfin, whatever search website you prefer to use, use those strategically. If you are working with a realtor, that's great, but don't rely on them for everything. You wanna be in the driver's seat of your search. You wanna take an active rather than a passive approach. And so on all of these websites, you can set up your own search, your own criteria. It'll send you messages and alerts and notifications, things like that when new properties pop up. And a lot of these properties are time sensitive, right? It's a really hot competitive market, especially when it comes to kind of entry level farm properties. And so even if you learn of it a half day in advance and can let your realtor know about it and they can start setting up a showing, that's going to give you such a huge advantage if you are able to check on it regularly yourself and know what's available, what's coming on the market and then pass those things along to your realtor. I know that was one of our main strategies when we were searching and we were the ones kind of scouring what was coming on the market. And when we found properties that seemed interesting, we'd send them off to our realtor, go have a showing. When we actually did put an offer on something, the selling agent for that property was often amazed how quickly we were able to kind of mobilize everything, get a showing and get an offer in on a property, all because we were really being active in our search checking the listings regularly and we were just able to be on top of it and act quickly when something did come up. All right, so number two sort of piggybacks off that and it's to find a realtor that specializes in farmland. And if you're coming from kind of a urban or suburban background like we were, farmland can seem really foreign and really intimidating and you probably only know realtors that specialize in searching for properties and homes in those areas. But there are realtors that specialize in farmland. And so you'll wanna actually go out and search for some of those realtors. And oftentimes you'll find that the realtors that do specialize in farmland are the ones that get the farmland listings. And so that's a great place to start. You can just do a general search on the internet for realtors and farmland kind of in your area and see what that pops up. You can talk to real realtors that you know and see if they have any networks or connections of people a little bit further out in more rural areas that would know farmland. But they do exist and they're out there. You'll wanna do a little bit of searching and make sure you find the right fit of somebody who understands you and understands what you're looking for. But farmland is unique, right? You're not just buying a house on a typical quarter acre lot. You have wells, you have septics, you have barns and other structures and things like that. So you want somebody who knows the ins and outs of that. You want somebody who knows the ins and outs of a farm or agricultural kind of real estate transaction. And that's gonna be so helpful. The other thing about it is that because these realtors that specialize in farmland are networked already in the farming communities, they're going to receive first word of when properties are coming available. And so if something does come up that matches your criteria, that again is going to give you the advantage because they, they'll know about it before it really even hits the market. And you can maybe even go have a showing and have a chance to put in an offer before it hits the market. So number three is to check out your local FarmLink or LandLink site. And oftentimes there's nonprofits in certain areas or regions that run a, what, what's called a FarmLink site. And basically these are websites where landowners can go on there and create kind of a profile of their land that's either for sale or for lease and make that available uh, kind of first to, to local farmers in the area. And likewise, some of them also have the capability where a farmer or a homesteader or whoever can go on there and create a profile that kind of 
lays out what they're looking for in terms of a property. And it's a really neat kind of connection networking tool where farmers or homesteaders or whoever looking for land can connect with landowners. Oftentimes there will be sort of unique for sale by owner opportunities on these websites. There might be interesting leasing opportunities or lease to own opportunities that come up. You might even find unique transition or succession opportunities from maybe an established farm that doesn't have a successor for someone to come in and take over their farm and they're looking for a young farmer or young family to come in and take over the existing farming operation and eventually be in a position to even purchase the land. So FarmLink websites are a great resource and they have a lot of different unique situations and opportunities that you're not gonna find just in a normal internet search or a real estate search. So I'll include a link in the description box below of kind of a national directory of these FarmLink sites. You can also just punch in to a search engine your state or region or area and farm link and just see what pops up. There's more and more of these becoming available. So number four is what's called a farmland conservation easement. And I'm not gonna go into a full breakdown of what this is. All farmland has some sort of development potential and value associated with it. And so a farmland conservation easement is essentially an agreement that you are not going to turn your farmland into some sort of development, but it's going to stay in agriculture for the rest of its existence. And so you'll work with some sort of local or regional or national land trust or land conservancy. They'll help you assess sort of the, the development value of the property that you are interested in. And it has the potential to greatly reduce the cost of overall cost of the property because they will actually sort of purchase the development rights of the property so that it can stay in farmland or agricultural production for the rest of its life. So I'm gonna throw a link below to a webinar on farmland conservation easements done by some people that are really experts in this field and know kind of the ins and outs and they give some case studies of how this has worked out for different farmers. So farmland conservation easements are this really unique farmland acquisition tool that has the potential to make farmland a lot more affordable. So if you are interested, definitely go and check out that link below. So number five, and this may be the most important one of all, is to network with farmers. And so I, I like to think of this as sort of the boots on the ground approach, maybe even going door to door, making phone calls, things that are old school by today's standards. So I know a farmer who took this approach and they had their search dialed in, they knew exactly where they were looking. It was over an hour away from where they were currently living. So every weekend or whenever they had free time, they'd just get in the car and they'd go to that area where they were searching for farmland and they'd go to the local bars and restaurants and just drive roads, kind of getting a feel and lay of the land. And one day they saw a truck pulled over on the side of the road, there was a farmer there, they got out, they chatted with him, found out that he owned the farmland just down the road that they had driven past many times and basically said, if we could find the dream piece of farmland, that would be it right there. This farmer owned that land, they talked about it, they shared their, their dreams and their plans for their future farm, and they shook right then and there on the spot, agreed on a price, and they ultimately bought that farm and it's been the perfect fit for them. Another great place to look is farmer's markets, right? You always know that farmers are gonna be congregated at farmer's markets. And so going to your local farmer's markets, connecting with farmers there, sharing your story and what you're looking for. A lot of them have uh, kind of keep up to date with their neighbors and know what's going on. So a couple years ago, I worked for a farmer's market for a summer. And in that one summer, there were two different farmland opportunities that I caught wind of. One from a farmer that was retiring and he was selling, he had two separate properties. One of them he was selling off his, it was a house with some farmland and it was very affordable and he really wanted to see it go to another local food farmer. Um, the other one was a farmer whose father passed away and his father owned a home on a substantial amount of acreage and that land was going to be auctioned off. And again, this was sort of a unique situation because the son who inherited the land really cared about it and wanted to see it go to a good family or farmers who were going to use it for good purposes and so he actually had language specifically written into kind of the auction contract 
that he could accept or reject any and all offers or bids that were put on the property at the auction, right? He didn't just have to accept the highest and best. If there was a farmer that he was partic particularly interested in seeing this property that he grew up on go to, he had the right to accept that offer, even if it wasn't the highest offer. So I really think that boots on the ground strategy of networking with farmers, getting to know them, putting the word out, putting feelers out there is one of the best bangs for your buck you can get in your farmland search and can really surface opportunities that you're not going to find anywhere else. Number six is to market your search. And I'll give a couple different examples of what I mean by this. But one idea is just to create like a one page printout of kind of you and your family and your vision and goals for your farm or your homestead and what you plan to do with the land that you find. And this could be a really powerful tool to have sort of a physical representation of who you are and something you can just have on hand that as you meet people along the way, you can hand them the sheet, leave them with it, ask them to contact you if they hear of anything, ask them to hand it off to neighbors or anyone else that they meet that might have land or know of land that's coming available. Another idea is that like at our local feed store, they have just a board for classifieds up that, you know, farmers, anybody with any sort of a classified can go and post something on there. So you could take that sheet and go to your local feed store and post that up there. And so many farmers are in and out of the feed store each day day or week, right? And so that's a great place to get the word out. You can also look into getting a classified ads in your local newspaper. And then another idea is social media, right? Uh, marketing your search through social media. And I know another farmer who did a great job with this. They didn't even have a physical farm per se yet, but they documented their farm search on their social media account and that helps people really connect with you on an emotional level. It helps kind of sow seeds broadly of putting words and, and feelers out there if there are any opportunities for farmland and homes and acreage that might come available. Number seven is to search the internet and I'm not necessarily just saying to you know punch into Google farmland for sale near me although you should probably do that and just see what pops up. But using the internet in other ways, like for instance, on Facebook, there's a lot of local farming or local food Facebook groups that you could join. And this is a great way to network within the farming community. And oftentimes I've seen where people have put out there kind of what they're searching for in these groups and gotten responses from people or gotten connected with other people that might have farmland opportunities. Another idea is to look on either Craigslist or Facebook Marketplace, right, where people can just post things for sale. And sometimes there's for sale by owner farmland opportunities on there. So that's a great place to look. Also, there's some more niche real estate um, companies that are specialized in agriculture. Like by me, there's this one called Rooster Ag. Obviously, that's not like your Baird and Warner or something like that. So they specialize in farmland properties. And if you go on their website, they actually have a lot of listings of farmland that don't show up on your normal real estate searches. So look for those sort of more niche farmland real estate sites in your area. So number eight is to get connected with your local farmland auction agencies. And a lot of farmland goes to auction. And this, this may not be your number one strategy of searching for farmland but it's at least worth looking into and seeing what kind of upcoming auctions and farmland is going to be coming for sale and checking those out. If you do go to a farm auction, I guarantee at the very least, you're gonna learn things, you can meet some really neat people, and it'll be an interesting cultural experience. Number nine is to connect with your local conservation district or soil and water conservation district. Oftentimes these groups own their own farmland and have farmland that they lease out to farmers. So this option may apply more if you are considering leasing farmland, but at the very least, it's worth connecting with them, seeing if they know of any opportunities or farmers or landowners or anyone that you can connect with in the area and kind of using them as a way of networking since they're very involved in kind of the local, local farming scene. I know of a local conservation district and they're very friendly towards uh, local food farmers within their county. And so they actually had a 20 acre 
piece of farmland that they wanted to move towards organic farming. So they set up lease terms where they actually were planning to make that land available at a very reasonable rate to a local food farmer that would farm it organically. All right, so number 10 is to recruit others into your search, right? To not go at it alone. Bring family, friends, whoever you know, whatever connections you have existing already, bring them into your search, fill them in, let them know what you're looking for, use their network of, of connections to see if anything surfaces. If you know anybody, especially in the area that you are searching in, uh, talk to them and have them kind of be your eyes and ears, looking for for sale by owner signs, talking to neighbors, just trying to surface any opportunities at all, right? The more people that you kind of have on your team, the broader your web goes and the better odds you have of finding what you're looking for. All right, so those are my top 10 resources and tips for finding farmland. And really the point of it is to diversify your search, right? You don't want to focus on just one strategy, one approach, but the more of these things you can, you can tackle and incorporate and include in your search, the better your odds are going to be of finding what you're looking for. But on that same note, you can't do it all, right? And so I'd recommend that you just pick a couple or a few of these strategies, the ones that you think are gonna give you the best bang for your buck, and really go after those and incorporate those into your search. So I'd love to hear from you what's worked or what hasn't worked in your search for farmland. Drop a note in the comments below. Thanks so much for stopping by the farmstead today, and we'll see you next time.